Greetings AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Reckett here from Avon High School. Moving into video number three that's going to cover example three of our topics 4.4, 4.5. We're probably more so in topic 4.5, the full-blown applications of related rates at this point. And I have several videos here that will feature a lot of different types of related rate problems. Our first few, maybe not so interesting as far as a real world perspective is concerned, but they will certainly lay the foundation for becoming better at this problem solving technique. So our example three from my notes at Avon High School looks a little something like this. A rectangle is undergoing changes to its length and width. A rectangle's length is increasing at the rate of 2 inches per second and its width is increasing at a rate of 3 inches per second. How fast? Uh, find how fast the perimeter is changing at the moment its length is 10 and its width is 6. One of the things that I like to do when I teach related rates is to scaffold this into my four very important subheadings. Picture, given, find, an equation. I've often found that if students can break the information down into those categories, they can decipher what's going on in the problem and at least get their foot in the door, pick up some points at least, uh, as a free response question would be concerned, and hopefully enhance their overall understanding of what's happening. So for the picture here, maybe there's not a lot to draw. I'll admit it, it's just a rectangle, right? It's a rectangle that has a length and a width. It doesn't really matter which is which. I'll call this the length L and maybe that the width W. And it says that they're both increasing. So we can like make an up arrow kind of to indicate that the L is getting bigger, a right arrow to indicate that the W is getting bigger. But guys, that's about it, right? I can't really draw this super dynamic to illustrate this. Um, so we have to imagine what's happening. So what are we going to say for the given? Well, for the given, I always like to write my rates that are given. So I have length increasing at a rate of 2. So we could say that that is a derivative of L with respect to T that's 2. If you watched our second video, we talked about how to extract information like that from a problem and put it into a derivative equal numerical equation form. We also see that the width is increasing at a rate of 3. So we also have dw dt is 3. So that takes care of our given. I always put our rates in the given. The find is typically the information after the word, go figure, find. Find how fast the perimeter, now circle that, how fast is the perimeter changing? Well, we might want to pick up a new letter for perimeter. I think P works great. I like to use capital letters when I'm talking about names of formulas. So I'm going to find DP DT at the moment when, and I like to put the when after the find, when the length is 10 and the width is 6. Now, keep in mind, you can solve these problems perfectly without laying down this information. This is just given to you as a strong suggestion in case you've struggled setting up story problems because most of the time if a student's had trouble with story problems in the past it's typically the setup. The equation once you've talked about what you're finding, what the given is perhaps, the picture, we hope that that comes together. You've got this idea of rectangle. We've got this idea of perimeter that we've introduced. I got a feeling that it's the perimeter of the rectangle. So P would be 2 times L plus 2 times W. And once you have gotten all four of your fields filled out with the information, we are ready to do a little calculus. In a first semester Calculus 1 course, it's very likely you're going to take a derivative in a problem. No different here. That's what the equation is for. We are going to take the derivative of our equation with respect to time, and that's what's a little different about related rates. The independent variable is always going to be this t value. So when we take the derivative of capital P with respect to t, we get dp over dt. That's equal to, when we take the derivative of 2 times L, we get 2 times DL over DT. And when we add and take the derivative of 2 times W, we get 2 
times dw over dt. It's always going to work that way. And now we just throw in all the information that we know, and it's wonderful that we have it all laid out right in front here. We know that dp dt is what we're trying to find. We know that dl dt in this problem is going to be 2. And we know that dw dt in this problem is going to be positive 3. So once we compute that value, 4 plus 6, we get 10. We have our final answer. All that we need now is a label, some units. And since we're measuring a perimeter and our units were inches and seconds, we still keep that same label, inches per second in this case. And that's our answer to our first one. Notice the rate of change of the perimeter is not dependent upon the length and the width whatsoever. They could have been anything at any moment. That rate of change of the perimeter is always going to be 10. Now let's take a look at part B, which isn't going to really change a whole lot. We still have the situation where. Um, we have a rectangle, but what's going on now is the length is increasing by a rate of 3. So I still have a length that's increasing. That's wonderful, but doggone it, the width, I don't know what happened to the width, but the width is going to decrease. So let's say that the width gets smaller. That's it for my picture. You know, my given is going to change, like I said, a little bit. DL, DT is 3. And my dw dt is going to be negative 2. Now from this point forth, a lot of things are changing. The find is going to change. Find how fast the area is changing. So that means we're looking for a da dt, d capital A dt. And we're going to find that specifically when our typical values from before L is 10 and W is 6. So that didn't change from part A. Certainly another thing that's going to change from part A is the formula. And the formula for area, given these two units, would be L times W, given those two labels. We're now ready to take the derivative. I certainly hope you realize that we have a product rule on our hands, L times W. So the derivative of A with respect to T is dA dt. Let's perform the product rule on the right side. Derivative of L is dL dt multiplied by W. Add to that L times the rate of change of W with respect to T. There's our nice product rule. Now we just throw all the, the information that we know, and dA dt will eventually reveal itself. dL dt is 3. Our w is 6. Notice in this problem, you actually do need the values of l and w because it will vary depending on what size the rectangle is. The rate of change of the area will depend on l and w. Go ahead and take 18 minus 20. You notice the answer is going to be a negative 2, which is just saying that the rate of change of the area is actually getting smaller. It's decreasing by 2. The last question is, what are the units? And this is where you've got to be careful because I've seen many students have trouble with this. Think about what this numerator area would be measured in. Area, square units, in this case, square inches. So that's going to be the numerator's label. And because this has a time in the denominator, we just stick with our normal time measurement, in this case, seconds. So we have negative two square inches per second. And there it is, guys, your first official full-blown related rate story problem. Not too bad. Right, stick with me. I have several more videos to share with you. I think we get into some very interesting ones as we move through the, the line. Uh, each one's going to be a little different because they'll tackle different geometric ideas, different scenarios, maybe a different twist here and there. So they're all going to be really uh, good for you to take in. So we hope we see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.